All right, so now we're moving on to the layer palette, which in uh, Photoshop is one of the most powerful palettes you can use in touch. Uh, again, we've taken a little bit of a step back, but uh, if, you, if you know how to, if you are strong in the, in the basics of what layers are and what they do, touch kind of gives you pretty much everything you need in terms of uh, the, the comparison between itself and, and Photoshop. So um, as we go through the layers palette, You'll see, although it doesn't look like there's a lot there, you can, there's still quite a bit of power. It's just trying to figure out how to work with them within touch as opposed to how you work with them in Photoshop, which is completely different. Um, so I'm going to open up a brand new uh, picture. We're going to, uh, yeah, we'll import first. Let's go to Google and let's type in, um, I don't know, let's type in some kind of a texture. Let's see what texture brings up. Oh, perfect. All right, let's grab, uh, and I don't know if you're getting the same textures here, but let's grab, um, I like, kind of like the blues, so I like this ice texture right here. So let's grab the ice texture. We're going to use this as the background for, I guess in the end what we're making is a type of a magazine cover, that kind of thing, and we're going to use some layering techniques to kind of give you that 3D effect on that that magazine cover. So I'm going to add whatever texture. So here's here's a good texture to start with. And so you'll notice a couple of things. The, the layers palette is over here to the right. Um, you've seen before, if you've worked with other projects, you can have a, a bunch of layers in here and you can slide up and down. You can move layers. You can make layers visible, make them not visible, so on and so forth. Um, but we're going to, we're going to layer out a, a piece here uh, and then add some text, you know, text elements to it as well as do, talk about blending modes real quickly. Um, so I've got my background here and immediately I can go to layer options and let me just show you this real quick. Blend mode isn't really going to do anything because uh, there's just a transparent layer underneath it. Blend mode gets really cool when you have layers on top of each other. We'll talk about that in a little bit later. The main drive over here I wanted to show you was opacity and um, if you just lower the opacity you can actually, what opacity does is it allows you to blend into whatever layers are behind it. So the more opacity you throw out, the more colors are going to show up on the layer that you're on. So we're going to keep this at 100% for now, um, but I'm going to come back to this opacity idea in a, in a second. Uh, you've also got the trash can here as well um, and when there's other layers involved there's other options that show up here. I do want to add uh, some other layers and obviously you can add a new layer if you'd like. There are different types of layers that you can add. You can add a photo layer which will allow you, goes right to uh, your, which is the same thing as your input command. It allows you to go search for different pieces. Um, there is also, you can add an empty layer which will be transparent. You can duplicate a layer which will allow you to duplicate two layers of the same thing. Uh, you can also grab a layer from a selection which I won't spend too much time on. Uh, but if we were going to go back to the vegetable, uh, you know, the vegetable plate or the vegetable cutting board, instead of extracting, you could have added a layer from your selection of your tomato or something like that. And it would have just pulled out the tomato. So that idea of multiple ways to do, to get the same result is, is very apparent here in, in that touch. So I, let me actually, I just added a duplicate. So now you'll see the other options. Whenever you have more than one layer, you're going to see some other options here. Here's some layer options with some flattening. We'll talk about that in a second. Uh, and then you basically have this match color, which um, I'll come back to, although I really won't spend a whole ton of time with. Uh, as you put the slider on, you'll notice the two layers will match taking a green from the bottom color and pushing it over onto the top layer. But uh, that didn't show anything because we actually have two of the same layers here. So I'm going to trash this this top layer, this duplicate that I made. And I am going to go ahead and add a photo layer. We're going to go to Google. And we're going to type in, let's type in steel. And you'll get a bunch of steel textures. The one I'm looking for is more like a great steel, uh, a metal. This one actually probably will do this one. This is wallpapers. Yep, that's actually going to do nicely. So I'm going to click on Add, and it actually pushes it out over the, the pattern. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move it up, 
and I'm going to expand it out just a little bit so it covers the entire top of my picture and I'm going to cover a good chunk of it here. I'm going to move it all the way up and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to place it. And what you're going to notice is it crops out the rest. When it doesn't fit on the background layer, it crops out whatever's left. Um, so I've got this nice overlapping piece of steel. It is transparent, so I do have a, an edge there that I could throw a drop shadow on. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to go Effects, Drop Shadow. Now you'll notice you don't see the drop shadow on there, but if I move the dial on the drop shadow down to 90 here, and I'm going to increase the blur, now you start to see the drop shadow happening. So let me pull that way up. I'm going to also increase the distance just a little bit to make it more pronounced. There we go. And I get the drop shadow forming on the steel. This gives me a little bit of a 3D effect. So there's one layer. Okay, so I'm going to add another photo layer. And I'm going to type in, you already saw, I'm going to type in bamboo up here. And there's one in particular, I hope you get it. Um, but it's a lighter colored bamboo. Looks like this right here. So I'm going to grab that one. And I'm going to add that one to my picture. Oh, this is a little smaller. This should look funky. But I'm going to pull this down. Let me drag this up so I can see it. I'm going to pull this down. I'm going to expand across the bottom. And I'm going to move that and cover up the bottom a little bit. Let me make sure I get enough in the middle. Yeah, let me pull that back down a little bit more. So I got a good chunk in the middle. Keep in mind it's going to crop the bottom of this so I don't really, it's not a big deal to have extra there. So I'm going to go ahead and place it. Perfect. And I've got, got my steel and wood. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and throw a drop shadow on that wood as well. Uh, this one actually is going to be up here. Negative 90. And all the same settings from the previous drop shadow work, so I'm just going to click OK on that. So I've got already looking like a, a layered technique here. Uh, as I put some text in and some other pieces in, that's when I'll start to get into the, uh, the layer options and what's visible and what's not. So let me kind of spend a moment here. You'll notice I am on the bamboo layer. You see that from the white box around the layer element in there. And that's basically saying that's a selected layer right there. If I don't want to see the bamboo, I want to keep it in the picture, but I, I don't want to make it visible. I just push on the circle and it goes away as being visible. If I want to turn it back on, I just turn it back on. So I can make any of these invisible at any point in time if I want. I can also stack layers, which I'll talk about in a second. Um, let's go through merge while I'm here as well. So we're going to go in layer options. And the bottom line here is there's some differences here. If I just flatten the whole thing, give it a second, and the whole thing becomes flat, all down to one layer. Okay, that's a pretty powerful command. The only time you'd really want to use that is if you're saving to other another form other than PSDX, which is what Touch saves by default. Uh, if I was saving a JPEG or if I was really pushing this out for some other production, that's about the only time I would really flatten. Because quite honestly, once it's flattened, you're kind of you can't do anything with the layers anymore. So flattening is kind of a finishing technique. So let me undo that. Um, Let's look at the difference, however, between, so there's two others here, Merge Visible and Merge Down. So let me do Merge Down first. I've got the bamboo selected. So if I just have one layer selected and I say Merge Down, it's going to combine the selected one with the, the layer below it. So now both my wood and my bamboo are on the same layer. Let me undo that. That's different from, let's say I deselect the background or I don't make it visible and now I go to Merge Visible. Now what that's going to do, in essence I end up with the same thing, um, but if the background was visible, all three of them would be merged together. So keep in mind, Merge, uh, merge Down only does one layer at a time. Merge Visible will merge all of the layers that you have that are visible. So if I've got ten layers that are visible and two of them that aren't, and I say Merge Visible, it's going to merge all only the 10 layers, not the other two. 
if I say merge down, it's only going to take whatever layer I have selected and merge that when, with the one below it. So big difference there. Let me undo and turn back on the background. Okay, let's add one more piece of texture here. So I'm going to go out and get, I'm going to add another layer, photo layer, and we're going to go out and get some hay. And I'm going to look for something that's just a textured, there's a good one right there, a textured hay piece. So I'm going to add that. It's a big one, so we should be should be okay there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to shrink that up a little bit. Well, actually, I'm going to make it as big as I can to cover, and I'm going to slide that to the right, just to kind of give the indication that I'm going to have half of the background and then half of the hay. And I'm going to go ahead and place that. I'm going to put here's the ordering piece. I want the hay to appear like it's underneath the wood and the steel. So as long as I bring the wood and the steel above the hay, you'll notice it's a, it's a layered piece there. The other thing I want to kind of bring to your attention at this point in time is the blending mode. So I'm going to click on the hay. Now that I've got multiple layers in here, I can mess around with the blending modes a little bit. So as I look at darken, you'll notice it's just picking up wherever the, the, uh, the, under, the underneath layer has darker colors. It's going to shine through the hay. If I go to multiply, you start to see a lot more of the blue from the background shining through. And then lighten only gives you the light color shining through. Okay, so the lighter blue is what's shining through, which in this case is a ton. You've got screen and you've got some other ones in here too. Um, the one that's probably the most popular is overlay. Actually, this looks pretty cool too, difference. So the difference is where the hay sits in, in accordance with the blue. So I'm going to drag this down a little bit, drag the opacity down a little bit. gives it a nice little blue, but I get the hay texture coming through it. So that's pretty cool right there. So I'm going to keep it just like that. Okay, now we're going to add some text in here. So I am going to go ahead and click on the text tool. And I, uh, I want to keep the number two, so go ahead and type in two there. That's good. And then we want to give it somewhat of a thicker of a thicker font. Let's see what this looks like. But actually, that's going to be pretty good. And I'm going to make it a bigger size here. Yeah, no, I actually don't like that font. As it got bigger, it was crazy. There we go. Nice and tall. I like that. So I'm going to slide that right up in here somewhere. And color-wise, I'm going to try to grab a color from, I'll show you how to use the eyedrop here. I'm going to try to grab a color from the bamboo so it somewhat matches. So let me grab that again. Grab the eyedropper. And I'm going to kind of pick a color from the bamboo. Not bad. I'm going to say OK. So I'm going to place my two. And I'm going to pull it down so just the top part of the two is underneath the steel. Just a little bit. It's not underneath yet, but overlap the two and the steel. And let's throw a drop shadow on that too. Oh, effects, drop shadow. And that one I'm going to change to 30. Again, you sometimes your drop shadows work pretty well if they're down and over to the right. That looks pretty good. I'm going to keep that. And so I've got my chapter number. And now what I want to do actually is actually have the steel over on top of the two. So I'm going to grab the steel layer and I'm going to put that right up over the top of the two. And uh, let me move up the two just a little bit more. So I can make room for some other text in there. So I've got my two in there. And then what I'm going to do is, is put the word textures right along the top of the uh, the bamboo here. So let me add some more text. And we will type in the word. Textures. And we're going to do a different one there. We're going to do, there was one that looked really, the stencil looked really good. So we're going to put that as stencil. There we go. I'm going to change the color there. 
Let's change it to the steel color, silver. Looks good size-wise. Let's deselect. And then we'll move this textures over. Oh, wait a minute. My textures got cut off, so let me back up. Oh, I'll have to redo, redo the textures layer. There we go. Textures back up to where I was before. I want to make sure I look okay there. So I'm going to, yeah, we look good. Let me change that now. Put that right in the middle, just like that. Layer on top of the wood. We're actually going to throw some effects in there. We're going to drop shadow. That looks pretty good. And now we're going to do something uh, called bevel. Which if you look at bevel, what bevel does, it makes it look like it's a 3D effect. You've got some white highlights on the top and some darker on the bottom. So it kind of bubbles up the uh, bubbles up the letters. Intensity's up there. Let's see what distance does. It's going to give me more of an effect. Yeah, I'm not sure I like that too much. There we go. A little bit more of the effect. Let's go down to 10. That's actually pretty good. We'll keep it just like that. So... Uh, so you'll notice that you can layer these out. So let's say if I wanted the bamboo above the textures, I would select the bamboo and put it above the textures, and you could see how that works. The only problem there is um, you don't really see uh, the word textures. Let me try something here. Let me move this, and maybe we could put that right up over the two. There we go. That actually looks pretty good. So i got the two layered underneath the steel and the textures word. 